and hello everyone welcome back to another Lua tutorial so in this tutorial we will be talking about something that makes programming really powerful one of the reasons why programming is as powerful as it is today we'll be talking about implementing logic into our code so your program can make decisions that it is absolutely epic your, you can make your program make these decisions by using an if statement, like asking a question. If something is true, then do something else. So in this case, if true, take note, that's a Boolean, then, and here you can just print, this was true. So one of the most basic data types is used of one of the most complex type of statements. That is pretty epic. We run this, this was true. Now the cool thing here is, this code will only run while this here is true. If I make this false, then this code will no longer be ran. So it skips it. This makes everything way more powerful. For example, let's say local x is equal to two. And if x, and then this is a cool symbol, is more than, and let's say 5, then print x is more than 5. Run it, and oh, x is not more than 5. So this will not run. But if we were to say x is 9, because x is more than 5, we'll get something out of it. We also have the opposite symbol, so less than. So we have more than and less than, where you can figure out more than, we'll try and get the one that's the biggest. So if this one is bigger than this one, it's because it will try to eat the largest one. So this is a mouth and it's trying to eat the largest one. If this is bigger than this, then it will be true. This is smaller than, because now we'll try to eat this one and hope that this one is bigger. So this will see if X is less than five run it, it skips the code, but if we were to make x 2 again, then we'll get x is more, that should actually be less, less than 5, but you still get the point. There's a lot more comparison operators, which I'll get a little bit more into, but not every one of them. So we have the and, or not, and I'll get into a lot of these. More than, less than, more or equal, less or equal, not equal. Yeah. Take note, in other languages, you'd usually have a not equal like this. In Lua, it's not with an exclamation mark. And then you have two equal symbols to say equal. So these are all you can use in here. And they're very powerful to use. For example, if X is less than five, and x is more or equal to 2. So we're checking if x is more or the number 2. So 2, 3, and up. And this is if x is less than 5. This does not mean including 5. If x is 5, this will be false. Because this only checks if x is less than 5. If you say less or equal to, then if x is 5, this will be true. So take note. Then here we can say x is between 4 and 2, both included. So this will see if x is less or equal to 4 or less than 5. This will check if x is more or equal to 2 or in other words, more than 1. It doesn't matter which one you use. In, more than, more than equal, or less than, less than equal. It more depends on what you prefer. I prefer just doing more than or less than, but occasionally when I'm a bit more tired, I would usually go for more or equal and less than or equal. And if we run this, it works. If I make x5, then it doesn't work. But if I say less or equal to 5, which will now include 5, then it will run it. 
This and here just says both of these should be true. So if this is true and this is false, it will not execute. So if I were to say true and false, then it won't execute. But if I say true and true, it will execute. Or we'll do the opposite. Or we'll see if one of these are true. If one of them are true, it will run. So it will run. It won't run. Or it, it will run, my bad. And if both of them are false, it won't run. There we go. And in a not, we'll just basically invert something. So something that is not false is true. So it's, it's kind of like speaking. If something is not false, it is true. If it's not true, it is false. So not false or false. And I will give, this will make this one true. And here again, brackets becomes a important part here. For example, if we were to do this, then it will say if not, and then whatever comes from this, false or false, this will be false. So if not false, if true then. So take note brackets do play a role here. If I were to make this one true, then it won't work. If I were to remove these brackets, then it won't work either because true is now false. If I were to make this true, it will work. But if I wrap these in brackets, it will not work because true and true or true or true will return true. And this will result in a true here. So if not true, brackets can make everything a bit more complex, but also make what you can do a lot cooler. So let me show you an example of where an if statement could be useful. Let's say local age is equal to 15. So this person is 15. If age is more or equal to 18, then let's say they want to go into a bar. So we say print, you may enter. They may enter the bar if they're 18 years or older. And here, if this works, it will run. They're not 18 or older. So if we say 20, then you may enter. Now, what if we want to give them something else? For example, if they're, let's say 17, we want to, to tell them to scram. They are not welcome here. So print, you are not welcome, be gone. But you might already notice what will happen here. If I run it, we'll get both. We could go if, and then age is less than 18 and then throw this in there. This is perfectly fine. So now we have two if statements and uh, it will work. If we go here and say 17, then you're not welcome, be gone. But there's a cleaner way to do this. We can go else. Else is when this here does not execute. So when this is false. Now we can just move this up there and there we go. We run it. You're not welcome, be gone. If you change this to 18, then we'll run the top one. Let's say it's a, this bar is near a children's tourist attraction. So kids that are under the age of 12 might want to go to that attraction. So we could go here and say, else if age is less and 13, so everyone that is not a teenager yet. Print, the water slides are down the road. Cool. So now we're checking. If the user's age that's trying to enter is more or equal to 18, they're allowed to enter the bar. If their age is under 13, we tell them that the water slides are down the road. Otherwise, they are not welcome and they should be gone because then we know they're teens and they're trying to sneak in to get a quick drink. Run this, you may not enter or you may enter. If we change this to 17, then they're not welcome. If we change this to 10, oh, 10, then the water slides are down the road. 
We can of course do more, for example, local birthday is equal to false. Now let's say it's their birthday. We can go if birthday, then print you get a free drink on us. So now if it's their birthday, they'll get a free drink. So you can use an if statement within another if statement. If you run this, uh, let's just maybe make this 18, we'll get you may enter. If we make their birthday true, then you get a free drink on us. And there's a ton of things you can do more with if statements, but most of these you can just get by trial and error and by practicing what we've just learned. And last but not least, we can also do something like this. Local name, and let's say if local age here is more than 18. So if age is more than 18. And Mike or Jeff. So if the age is more than 18, then their name will be Mike, otherwise Jeff. And we can imprint name. This is a cool one-liner where everything can be done in one line. So now we get Mike because their age is more than 18. If we change this to 15, then we'll get Jeff. So in this one line, you can set a variable using an if statement. You can of course also set a variable in a normal if statement. So true and then name is equal to Luke. This right here is also valid, so print name. So this will also work. However, this is in one line, so it might be more comfortable. But if you prefer writing it out like this, then that's perfectly fine as well. However, take note, if you were to say local name here, it will recreate this name variable and it will be scoped between this. So it will be scoped here. Meaning we can't use this name here. So if we were to print out name here, we'll get Jeff. If we remove this local, they will add try and access this name here and we get Luke. So take note, when you declare a variable, you're using local, so local, and this will declare a new variable and it will locally scope it. So it's only allowed in its current scope. And that's that for if statements. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all again in the next tutorial. Thank you.